It's the new year and we're already tackling the talk about tax reform. Wealth strategist and tax attorney Rebecca Walser is here to tell us what in the world does all of this tax reform mean for us? How are you? How are you? I like this. I know. We're red. both, both we're still in, in the festive mode. Exactly. So, Rebecca, I mean, it is. And I've thought of you during all of this as we've been seeing it, you know, come on the news. Yeah. Break it down. What do you have to say? Well, there's a lot to break down. Oh, my gosh. So the first good news for Floridians. Let's start with that since yeah, we're in Tampa. I like good news. Yeah, let's have the good news. Um, this tax bill does really disproportionately affect high taxed states and really in something we call SALT. SALT, which is state and local taxes. And the way it does is that now state and local tax deductions on your itemized deductions is limited to $10,000. So let me give you an example. People in California, maybe their property taxes are $40,000 a year on their house. And they pay another maybe say $50,000 a year in state income tax. They were deducting literally $90,000 a year off of their income, taxable income on Schedule A. That is now truncated from 90,000 to 10,000. So California, New York, New Jersey, uh, Illinois, these states are very high tax property wise and high tax state income tax wise. So we have a benefit because we don't have state income tax, mm -hmm. so we don't have to worry about losing that as a deduction. And then our property taxes, unless you have, you know, a really higher level home, you're, you're probably going to have your property taxes covered by that $10,000 limit. Now, the other thing that we are used to deducting is what we call our sales and use tax. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, we're used to in Hillsborough County when we add the, 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 the county part and the state part together, it's about 7% as a general rule. And so what happens is if you, if you guys at home use TurboTax, TurboTax mm -hmm. estimates based on your total gross income how much sales and use tax you paid, and then it'll just put it on as, as a line item on your deduction. So between your sales and use tax deduction and and your property taxes, go back to your tax return from 2016 and look at those two items on the Schedule A and see okay. what they were, because now that's going to be reduced to 10000 whatever it was. So I see that's some good news, but also some homework for everybody out exactly. there. That's a really good way to check. I wasn't sure like how it was really going to affect us. So now I know where to look and exactly. what to look at. And then the other thing is, is that if your itemized deductions weren't that great, if you just barely made it over the, you know, standard mm -hmm. deduction, well, now the standard deduction has been doubled. So it's possible that you might not even have to itemize next year simply because the deduction is so much higher. Which is going to obviously affect families a lot. So you don't have to exactly. keep all of those details and everything because exactly. you meet the standard. Okay, Absolutely. I'm kind of regurgitating it yeah. as I try to process yeah. all of this information as I well. I think two other places that it affects, you know, the common person out there is the Coverdell. Um, I don't know if you know what the Coverdell mm -hmm. is, but it's, it's basically the 529 of early education. So 529s are post-secondary college education and up. Mm -hmm. um, Coverdell was basically anything from K through 12. You could basically put $2,000 per year in a Coverdell and it could grow tax-free and you could use that for private school education if your kids were in private school. Up until 12th grade. Up until 12th grade, but there were some income limits. You had to be basically less, making less than 220,000 as a married couple or 110 as an individual. That now has changed and is basically eliminated. No more Coverdell uh, account, no more authorizations to to make contributions to that. It's now going to the 529 and the 529 is now going to start at basically before birth. You can actually open a 529 plan now for a child that is not yet born. Wow. Yes. So, okay, so these 529 plans, this is kind of the first time to go into this. Is this something that you recommend doing now seeing all the changes that we've had? <sighs> I know oh, she, yeah, always so, she always hates it when I get there. It's really hard. A really, in a nutshell, uh, really fast, you know, Natalie, the 529 is a great tax issue, but we do have the market volatility. And if the market crashes right before your child goes to school, that's been a problem for people. So, so that's even with these changes in the tax reform. Yeah, still we've got to look smart. at everything from both ways. Yeah, uh, and, and I know you do that. And that's what you've been able to do with this tax reform. So it looks like we covered some positives yep. in Florida. Let's look at both sides, like you said. Yep. What else can we expect? You know, that was really it. The only other thing is mortgage interest deduction used to mm -hmm. go up to a million dollars on a first or second home. Now it's going down to it's gone reduced been reduced to seven hundred fifty thousand. So if your house mortgage is more than seven hundred fifty thousand, your interest is limited to the deduction on seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of a mortgage. Okay, breaking it down, Rebecca Walser style. If you want to go ahead and contact her so that she can help you with your finances, WalserWealth.com. There's a phone number as well. Thank you so much for coming in, as always. Thanks, Natalie.